Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the new AMD Phenom 2, the dual core 555 Black Edition. So this one here, here's the part number for you, has a 45 nanometer architecture with 758 million transistors approximately, comes at 80 watts. So it is a fairly low powered CPU, maximum temperature that uh, it supports 70 degrees Celsius, so we want to stay below that, from 0.875 to 1.5. 4 volts is the uh, core temperature there. Level 2 cache 1 meg, level 3 cache 6 megs. So not bad at all as expected on the Phenon 2s. And it's using the AM3 socket. So again, you could use this with an older AM2 Plus. Just check your motherboard manufacturer. Now this is my test system that I'm using today. It's an AM3 motherboard. And um, all of these components basically I've reviewed in previous uh, video reviews. So you can check them out. Now in Windows 7 here, at the defaults, you can see that I'm running CPU-Z and it's got the Callisto Core, that's the code name, 1.4 volts, that's what it's running at, and uh, I have not overclocked or done anything to it yet. You can see that this is using the revision C3, so that's the um, latest revision of that CPU. And uh, here are the uh, core speeds, the multiplier, the bus speed, as I mentioned, nothing's overclocked, 3.2 gigahertz is the default for this CPU, which kind of makes it the fastest clocked dual core CPU right now on the market, okay? At no load, we're looking at very low temperatures with the CPU cooler that I have, which is a mainstream CPU cooler. 25 degrees Celsius is very low. And uh, at full load, we're looking at roughly 40 degrees Celsius. Again, that's using the uh, Glacial Tech Igloo CPU cooler. If I had an even better CPU cooler or water cooling, then um, you can probably imagine the, the results. Now let's take a look here more in detail though, some benchmarks. Starting with 3D Mark 06, you can see the CPU score here, which is what we're looking at. We're not really uh, benchmarking the video card, even though it's a 4870, but we're really looking at the CPU score. Okay, so 5554 here in 3D Vantage. Now where does that put the CPU? Well, with 5554, it ranks quite low compared to these other CPUs, but as soon as I overclock it and unlock the two remaining cores to make this a quad core, it blows all of these CPUs away. So basically, the potential for overclocking is really great with this Black Edition CPU, and that's one of the points I want to make in this uh, review. Again, with PC Mark Vantage, as you can see here, these are the scores at it at default 3.2 and then overclocked. Now here's another example. If I um, do a conversion encoding from AVI to MP4 using default clock speeds, okay, not overclocking anything yet, so it's about a 250 meg file, it takes roughly about 15 seconds to convert it from AVI to an MP4 file, okay, for you to uploading for example in, in HD. So 15 seconds there. If I overclock it and unlock the four cores, then it takes nine seconds. So the potential here is really great. You can basically um, get yourself a quad core or it even just overclock the two cores from it. Here are some gaming benchmarks just for your reference. Again, we're not testing the video card here. We're just trying to see if the CPU can keep up with the video card, obviously. And I'm running everything at ultra high settings, of course. DirectX 10.1 enabled here, and um, here's Bioshock, for example, and I'm getting terrific results. There's no bottlenecking on these resolutions, which is what you would expect. You don't want uh, a CPU to slow down the performance of your machine and, uh, and the latest uh, or, or decent video card that you might have. So these are really, really good results from this Phenon 2, obviously at default settings. I'm not overclocking. Now, if I do overclock, and of course it depends on your bias and the chip, not everybody can overclock the same. Here is my bias that I'm using today on this Jetway HA08 motherboard, which I reviewed previously. I enable the advanced clock calibration. I set that to auto, and that's how it actually unlocks the four cores. Here are the voltages that I used, okay, for your reference. And uh, again, not all biases are the same, so you might not have the option. This is the bias that I'm using. These are the results that I get from this bias using the Jetway motherboard. So by unlocking the four cores now, I got myself essentially a Deneb Core 
um, quad core CPU, which CPU Z is obviously recognizing here, as you can see. And um, well, 3.6 gigahertz is what I'm uh, getting out of this right now with a minimum voltage increase. I don't want to increase this to 1.5 volts. I want to keep it as low as possible. So 1.43 volts, running it on full load, excellent results. Um, and as you can see, basically I got myself a quad core for the price of a dual core. So can't go wrong with that. If I have water cooling, even better, right? Because then we can even push this even further. But right now I'm using a CPU cooler that's really meant for a dual core CPU, but I've unlocked the four cores. So the temperatures are obviously a little bit higher when you got four cores compared to two. Here's the temperature on two cores. Obviously on full load with two cores, default everything, we're looking about 40 degrees Celsius max, okay, on the temperature. But as soon as you unlock all four cores and you overclock it and everything, well, it's not going to run at 40 degrees Celsius. It's going to run much higher. So at idle, we're talking about 40 degrees Celsius. On full load, we're talking about close to 70 with the CPU cooler that I had. Again, a better CPU cooler will decrease the results. And on average, you won't even get to 70. You run about 55 degrees Celsius or less on average with the four cores unlocked, overclocked at 3.6 gigahertz. So terrific results. Definitely recommend it for the price point of $99. That's the price at launch. And I'd like to thank AMD for providing it. And I hope you enjoy this video. And thank you for watching.